effect to bring one who is no stranger to this church, no stranger to any of us. We are happy to have all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, our friend and our brother and the son of our pastor, Reverend Bernard Embry. Come on, give God some glory for him. Down the highways, he did a phenomenal job yesterday at Uncle Walter's funeral. I think Uncle Walter would have been proud. And so we are just grateful to have him here. We want to thank his partner in ministry and his future missus, Sister LaShawn Nicole, for coming along with him. Come on, bless God for her. Amen. And I'm going to decrease so that God, through his man, can increase. Are y'all ready? Y'all ready? It's preaching time. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. So without any further preliminary or ado, we present to some and introduce to others Reverend Bernard Emery. Come on, give God some hand clap and put a hand clap of praise for him. Amen.
good shepherd. John 10, chapter 1, uh, verse 1. Think John 10, 10, verse 1. It says, Verily, verily, I'll say unto you, He that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. This is a lot, right by itself. You can't come to Jesus, come to correct, come to the right door. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. That's what he says, right? right. So he said he enters the door, the shepherd. This is him that poured it open. That means the gate, over the gate. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them where? Out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. Check this out. They know his voice. They know his voice, there. And the stranger that will not follow. But will flee from him, for they know not the voice of what? Strangers. Man, you better preach. Amen. Go to verse 7. Said, then, Je then said Jesus unto them again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, who is you? Everybody in his house. Says, I am the same one in the beginning, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, who created the heaven and the earth. He said, I am the door of the sheep. Says, all that ever came before me are, are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. That is so awesome. Says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I love it. Then he goes and says, The thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am yeah. the same Lord who saved your life from sin. The same one who sacrificed his life. I am. He said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly. Then you go down to verse 13. He said, the hireling, matter of fact, go to 12. He said, but he that is in hireling and not, what? The shepherd. Whose own the sheep are not. See, if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catches them and what? Scatters them. Scatter the sheep. So that the hireling flee it because he is what? A hireling. And he cares not for the sheep. But then he goes and declares again that I am, hallelujah, glory to God in the highest. I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep and I am known of mine. You may be seated. Glory to God in the highest. God is in the house today. Because I was pondering this when I heard the news about what was going on in the house at Pilgrim Church. God began to speak to me. He says, you know what? I place people in position to shepherd my people, which are my sheep. So my sheep, the one thing I talked about yesterday, how sheep, they're, they're, they're innocent. They're dumb. They don't know how to take care of themselves. So they wander off from the sheepfold in different pathways that are not of God because of their fleshly desires. When your flesh arouses as a sheep in the house of God, you find yourself wandering. But Psalm 23 says, He leaves me beside the still water. He throws my soul. He leaves me the passion screen, right? Why? Because the shepherd knows what you need when you need it. Come on. See, a lot of people don't know how to rest. So you get frustrated because you can't fix your own situation. So you get busy. <laughs> busy in other affairs. Busy in your affairs. Busy in stuff that got nothing to do with you. <laughs> so you wonder from the sheepfold when he says, Now rod and I stop. Now I love this part here. Because the shepherds, back in the time of the Old Testament, they would give the young boys with the responsibility to care for the sheep because they couldn't take care of everything that they needed to do to fulfill the, the mission 
stuff, with gardening, all that stuff, right? So, when God came to Revelation, he says, the shepherd boy, they would give him a rod, and they give him a staff. He said, the rod was for the correction, not the correction, but to beat out the wolves that were coming against the sheep. And then while the beasts were trying to attack the sheep, he said, but the staff was, a, was there as an anchor that when the sheep fall into a pit of despair, I can take my staff, reach out, pull them out the pit, kill them on my shoulder, take them back to the pasture, and feed them. So I thought about this church. God says, not only do you have shepherds that are hired, you know what a hireling is? A hireling is an individual who gets hired to do a certain work only for monetary gain. But once the resource is not there that they need, I'm abandoning the ship. I ain't got time. I'm leaving the sheep boat and I don't want to be part of it. God said, in my sheep, they know my voice, a stranger. They're not going to follow because I know the shepherd, the good shepherd. He provides for me. He takes care of me. Even if my money ain't coming in, it ain't coming. The good shepherd says, you know, I'm your whole job. I am God El Shaddai. I'm a God who has enough to be joined. I didn't have much money to come here to go to Indianapolis. So I talked to my fiance. I thank God for her. My, my, my right and God. Thank God she put us together. Because this woman has been a great encouragement to my ministry. Who keeps me fired up for Jesus. Because I taught her when I first met her, her potential and her purpose, what God called her to be in ministry. And today she's standing as a living witness. So when, when I prayed about it, I said, God, I don't have a lot of money, but I got to go to Indianapolis. And my pastor gave me $100 last, last summer. And I said, God, I'm going to take this $100. I'm going to pray this $100. I'm going to leave in faith and stretch this $100. We're going to have enough money. So she got to spend all her money trying to take care of me and get down there. God had some people in the sheepfold following me. Who has your need because the Bible says you give, it comes back to you good measure, pressed out, shaken together, running your shame and give your good. So if I have a people position in the sheepfold, just when I had a need, because I saw all the time, God says, you know what? I'm going to rain on your hearts. I ain't looking more than a $500 this weekend because of my faith in God. People, they're not serious about the call of the ministry on their life. So when things ain't going where they want, they need the church. Hirelings. Members in the congregation. Hirelings. They only hear temporarily for their own personal satisfaction. When it's not being met, I'm leaving the sheep fold because I'm a hireling. He said, when the wolves came against the sheep, what happened? The shepherd abandoned the sheep. You know, I'm ready to hear my enemies. He killed all the prophets. I the same thing about shepherd got put in the house. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1 and 2 talks about the same thing. Jeremiah chapter 23, 1 and 2 talks about how God positioned people in heaven. Shepherds over the sheep. He said, but the sheep, the shepherd, some shepherd, that hearts are against things, you feel yourself, they don't even take care of the sheep. He said, you feed yourself, you dress yourself, but you let my sheep go astray, so you just let them scatter. But God says, woe to you, shepherds. A stern warning to you, shepherds. Who feed yourself and you cause my sheep to scatter? Because he said the same judgment is going to fall on you because of your disobedience. Say that. So God is trying to restore the house. He's trying to restore. 
restore order. I thank God for the faithful one who has been steady in from day one, who has not abandoned ship. Which is an indication there's something on the inside that's like fire burning in their soul that keeps compelling them to come to the house of God. It compels them to keep on seeking God's faith in the house of God. You know why? Because in the house of God, in a corporate setting, there is refuge. When we come together in one accord, the spirit of If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet reward. Come on. Did you know that? Yeah. It's a blessing being connected to the prophet. Come on. Just because he can't speak, he still speaks with his life. His mouth still sings a praise of God. He still declares the word of God. Even on the prayer line every morning, he still finishes the scripture because his mind is still sharp. You can't run him out of the house of God. If God set him here, God said, I'll be the one that take him out. Every roof and every house, every thief, every robber that tried to come in the house of God to disrupt God's order. God said, I'll be the judgment. Oh my God, speak God. I'm bringing the sword. And when I bring the sword, I'm going to begin to divide the wheat and the tares. I'm going to take out the thief and the robber. I'm going to bring in the sheep who have a love for God, who don't mind fellowship. Psalm 23, David says, He leads me besides the calm waters. You know why? Because our life is chaotic. Trouble comes in our life. And we gotta learn how to trust in the good shepherd. But he can take me to a place I can just sit down and just rest by the still waters. Not only that, when I get thirsty, he said, the water's so calm, I can drink from the fountain. But if the waters are raging and in top oil, the sheep are fucking just that water. I might fall in the ground. And God said, I will be a good shepherd. You might call me one, they're gonna be your satisfaction to meet your need. We can need it. He restores, refreshes, revives my soul. When I get troubled, I get thrown in my life, I get overwhelmed with some of the stuff going on. He said, He restores my soul. Glory to God. Well, one thing I love about David, he said, the Lord, he will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have some wolves and sheep clothing in Pilgrim Church. And God said, I'm going to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. And you can just sit down and dine with me. Right. And I will dine with you. Yeah. God promises you don't need to fight this battle. Because it's not by might and it's not by power. It's only by the Spirit of the living God. God promises that when the thief and the robbers come to steal your benefits, God says he daily loads me with benefits. So when a thief and a robber trying to take what God has for me, God said, I'll raise a standard against them. I'll stop right in that trap. Matter of fact, I'll call them to run away from you. Say, even when he's still from you, say, you're a thief when he found him. He got to throw you seven times. That's what he has stolen. Why? Right? But God's a God of multiplication. God knows I can take a little bit to fish and find loaves and feed 5,000 people. And still have 12 bags of fragments left over. God knows what He's doing better than you can figure it out. So many times we try to fight both in the house of God. And God said, sometimes you need to shut up and sit out and mind your business. Begin to trust in the Lord. 
Call your trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. God promises, I'm going to lead you to pasture green. We can go and eat what you need in the pasture. So many times there's a wolf out there waiting to devour you. There is a lion in the field sometimes looking to devour you. Jesus told him, he said, he ain't like a roar lion seeking whom he made it about.